I'm about to go get Botox. Just never seen this amount of eyelid droop before. I don't like how much this is. Here's me trying to raise my eyebrows. Small eyebrows up all the way. Raise your eyebrows. Now relax. I'm gonna move my brows a lot to kind of just relish in this facial movement. <laughs> there is no movement. I did it. I'm happy that I did it. I'm gonna try not raise my brows, but I'll give you the update. I, I can see it in myself. Oh my god. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lauren, if you're new here, and yep. <laughs> By the title of this video, I'm pretty sure you can tell that this is not like the usual content that I post on my channel, but I'm glad you're here anyway. I've been wanting to share more of my personal life with you guys here, and the things that I go through as a 31 year old woman living in LA, trying to just make it in the world, honestly, because that's the kind of content that I like to watch personally. So yes, it's true, I did it, I got Botox three times actually, and no one noticed. That's what's craziest to me. I have some footage from two years ago when I first got Botox done, and none of you noticed, not one person noticed on my channel, which is wild. I'm gonna go back and show you the Taylor Swift videos that you've watched of mine where my eyebrows were frozen and no one noticed. And I actually have a full vlog that just went live as soon as this video went live, where I take you through the entire day, like me being nervous before I get my first Botox shot and then my second and my third. So that video just went up, so make sure you go watch that after you check out this one. And I documented the process of my eyebrows getting slowly more and more frozen. So yeah, if this is your first time on my channel, hi, I'm Lauren. This is my first time making a video like this, so. Let's see what happens, shall we? Uh, make sure to subscribe, follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah, let's get into this video. So I actually have been waiting to post this video. Let's just call it waiting and not procrastination because I wanted to show you what my eyebrows look like as of today. It's officially been eight weeks since my last Botox appointment, which is longer than you're supposed to wait in between. But I'm trying to figure out what works for me and my budget because this ain't cheap, especially in LA. In today's in today's video, I'm gonna cover a few things. First, I'm gonna tell you exactly how much money I have spent on each appointment and the things that I wish that I knew. Appointment one. <laughs> I'll also be going over the footage that I took like two years ago, like before and after I got my first session and like the differences that I see now. And I'll be showing you progress photos, including the time that the nurse overdid it and I was unhappy with how I looked and I'm going to show you that. More on that later. And I even got a chance to interview the nurse practitioner in Denver who did this for me and she is so sweet and amazing. She answered so many of my questions that you might actually have about Botox yourself and why I actually like Dysport more than Botox. I know. New word you never heard before. So I sound like I just covered a lot of things, but I wanted to let you know that you guys can skip around. I'm gonna include timestamps down below. Okay, so like I said, what's really crazy to me is that I have gotten Botox now three times in my life, and not one person on my YouTube channel has noticed. Like, not even in the heyday of 2020 when I was still regularly posting and getting great views. <laughs> Seriously, I was pretty shocked. The first time that I got Botox was in February 2020. This was the time that I got way too much done, didn't know, was a first timer, and my eyebrows were pretty darn frozen. I got way more units than I intended to, and I was sure that someone was going to comment on it, especially because this was around the time when I posted my reaction to Taylor Swift's The Man music video. And you guys know me, you know my reactions, and especially if it's a Taylor Swift reaction, I'm a pretty animated person. I've got a really animated face. I like editing it. I remember being like, oh my God, this doesn't even like look like me. I'm a little bit dramatic sometimes, can you tell? It is just so obvious that my eyebrows aren't moving up and down. But out of 44,000 views, not one person even noticed. Which honestly goes to show you that we are our own worst critic. But here, look at this clip really fast of me realizing that it's Taylor Swift in the man music video and not another man. Tell me if you notice it now that I've told you. Who is this? Did she hire an actor? Like, is it like a... No! 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 <laughs> Oh my God, 
Uh, first of all, great music video. Second of all, wild, right? Do you see it? I will say I like that it's not super noticeable unless someone points it out because that's exactly what I wanted. I'm not trying to look like some puffy real housewife. So with that, let's get into why I wanted to get Botox in the first place. And quick disclaimer before I go on, I am not telling you what you should be doing with your body and your face. I don't even want you to leave this video thinking that I'm promoting it because it's definitely not for everyone. This is just something that I decided to do for myself a couple years ago. And now that more time has passed and I feel a little bit more experienced and educated on the subject, I'm finally ready to share with you guys how it went for me and my personal experience. That's all. Please do not go into the comments and say what a bad example that I'm setting because I am not here to be your doctor or your mentor. I'm just here to share my life with you and it is up to you to do with this information what you will. I guess by the way I should tell you what Botox even is. Basically, Botox is a toxin that is injected into certain parts of your face or body and it's used to weaken or paralyze a certain muscle by blocking certain nerves. It is FDA approved that has been around for a very, very long time. So if you are really thinking about it, do your own research and ask around. So how did we get here, you might ask? Whew, this is gonna be a fun video. I got some weird pictures to show you guys, so buckle up. So in 2018, I was 27 years old and I didn't really have any experience Experience with Botox or even any basic knowledge on what it was other than what I was able to gather from like reality TV and pop culture and all that. To me at the time, Botox was pretty synonymous with like plastic surgery and facelifts and it all sounded really scary. You might relate to that actually. I was into some skincare, maybe retinol, but like I personally was never really concerned with the long-term wrinkles on my forehead or how to be preventative. I do also feel like Botox has become more widespread over the last couple of years. I don't know, maybe it's just because I live in LA, but you know what, actually comment down below where you're from and if you feel like Botox has become more like commonly accepted and like not as a taboo subject. I'm curious to know, let me know your thoughts on that. But anyways, in 2018, I was living with my first roommate in LA. One day she mentioned to me that she had been secretly getting Botox and that she didn't want anyone to know. That I think, yeah, that was honestly the very first time that I had ever known someone to get Botox. And I was like, what did you get Botox for on? like? You look fine, I don't get it, like, tell me what this is. She then pointed to her forehead, to the horizontal lines that every single human on the planet eventually gets. It's not a bad thing. She was like, these, I hate these, they give away that I'm 30 and I just personally prefer to have them frozen and then my future skin will be less wrinkly. I, of course, was like, what? What are you talking about? You look fine, like, I don't understand, but also, you do you, boo-boo, whatever makes you happy, that's cool. I was 27 at the time, didn't really, I didn't really think much of it. Fast forward to early 2020, before the terrible thing happened to all of us. Yeah, literally right before. It's funny because I remember the exact moment when I saw a picture of myself and I saw these deep, deep forehead lines on myself that I had never seen before. I was like, whoa, when did this get there? I've never seen this before. I don't understand it. I think I was trying to post like an Instagram. I was like, what is happening? Is that me? I actually went through and I dug up the exact photo that gave me this feeling and I will show that to you now. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like embarrassed to show you this photo. It's not a bad photo. It's me smiling with one of my best friends. But for some reason, I just could not get past these forehead lines. And some people might argue in this picture that like my under eye wrinkles are more prominent. I am just, I'm not bothered by these. I'm not bothered by my smile lines, I, or people call this crow's feet. I'm not bothered by that. It's these forehead lines, these horizontal forehead lines that just, I couldn't get past it. I started doing some research on skincare, learning that I really needed to wear a lot more sunscreen on my face than I had been, and that some high quality retinol could help control these deep seated lines. However, that's when I really started to look into Botox and where I could find an appointment and get it done ASAP. Being the good little YouTuber that I am, I thought that maybe one day I would want to make a video about Botox on my channel, so I filmed it. <laughs> and I held on to that footage until today. Good morning, guys. It is Thursday, February 6th, and I'm a little bit nervous. For today, I am getting Botox for the first time. I'm gonna move my brows a lot, kind of just relish in this facial movement that I might not be able to do for a few months. When I have a resting face, I have these two lines right there and right there that just bother me. I'm about to turn 29. It's not that ridiculous. I've never done like anything 
like filler like or plastic surgery this isn't surgery obviously but I'm worried about what my friends in Denver will think I don't know that's why I am unsure if this footage will ever be seen by anyone who knows I use so many expressions with my face that I'm worried it's gonna take away a part of me. I'm excited though. This is something that I've really been wanting to do. It's making me so self-conscious. I hate picking apart myself in photos. This is the one thing that I feel like ages me. It just makes me look so much older than I am because I'm still 22, right? Right? <sighs> we can do it. Last few movements. <sighs> Shocked. Resting. See, look at that. Resting. They're there, that's what I want. I wanna get rid of it when I'm resting. So there's that, oh my God, there's another one. Ah, please don't judge me. Trust that I am my own human and that I wanna do what I wanna do. And if I don't like it, it'll be gone in three or four months, so. She's having me frown, we're talking about this, we're going up. You guys have two more injections and you are done. Ah, that's crazy. Oh my <laughs> God, she did it. These two, those. <laughs> this will be gone in 10 minutes. Oh my God. Yeah. Small eyebrows up all the way. We did here, 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 and here. Okay, and the fact that I can move Everything right now is normal. It's normal. And it's pretty interesting to see my forehead then and my forehead now. Because you are actually supposed to get Botox, depending on how many units that you get, every like three to four five weeks is is just depending on the place that you get it in. There's so many things that you can do with Botox. Did you know that you can actually, if like you're like a chronic over sweater, you can get Botox injections into your armpits and it will help that. If you get crazy migraines, you can get Botox injected into your temples and it will stop your migraines. It's wild to think about all the things that it's used for, yeah. Okay. So, the first place that I tried Botox um, was in LA at a fancy schmancy med spa. Like, very fancy. I think the Kardashians go there. I'm not sure why I thought that would be a smart idea to go as a first timer, budget wise, but that's just, that's where I went. I actually knew someone that worked there and they were just so sweet. Like again, the staff is so incredibly nice and kind and they did everything right. I don't think I'm gonna share the name of the med spa right now. Just because I didn't enjoy my first session, I don't think it's their fault. I think I should have gone in more educated. Looking back, I wish that I did a little bit more research on what exactly that I wanted to do, what I wanted to get frozen, how many units I wanted to get. My first treatment of Botox in February 2020, I got 22 units. It was $14 a unit and I spent $308. It was a lot of money, it was a lot of Botox, and now that I've done it twice since, I, it was way too much. I did not enjoy the feeling of being that frozen. So it's been three days since I got injected with Botox, and I can kind of start to see it. Look, I'm trying to like, okay, all the way. This is me raising it all the way. This line is not there as much, and then, that's definitely a difference. Oh, it's happening! Okay, okay, Botox update. Yesterday was seven days since I've had Botox. Here's me trying to raise my eyebrows. I don't know why opening my mouth feels like it'd make it work better. So like, you really can't, there is no movement. And I'm here furrowing. I like that I can still furrow. But resting, check out resting. I am so happy with how the resting looks. However, I will say, I feel like this eye is a little lower set than it normally is. It's kind of giving me this like hooded thing on my, when I was doing my eyeshadow today, I noticed it. And I don't know, she said that that might happen because I really didn't want like a ton, like I don't want to be totally frozen. So I will say right now, at this current stage, which is like eight days after, I don't like how much this is because I feel very frozen. I felt like they really, really overdid it. My main goal of wanting to get Botox was to get rid of these deep-seated forehead lines that were on my face when I was at rest. The kind of Botox that I've experimented with so far is truly just preventative for the future of my face. <laughs> Y'all know I'm a very, very expressive person and I would like to keep my face as healthy as possible. I'm not really a... I'm very scared of things like filler. That's not my vibe. But yes, anyways, now that I've had two more appointments since then, I was like, whoa, she put in a lot on my forehead. So here are my three before and after pictures. I probably shouldn't have taken the before pictures in the med spa elevator to their floor. Elevators have terrible lighting, so these are going to be dramatic before and after pictures, but 
Here is before my face at rest, before with my eyebrows raised, and before with my eyebrows furrowed. And then here's two days later, my face at rest, my eyebrows raised, and then my brows furrowed. Because it's me and my face, I was like, I'm already seeing a significant difference. Um, Botox takes about seven days to kick in, but you can kind of see like on the on the eyebrow raised one, it's it's looking a little bit weaker, right? One of the significant things that I experienced during this time was how much my eyelids drooped. I, I already have like a little bit of a droopy eyelid, but like, you know, you get used to putting like makeup on your eyelid. You get used to how your face looks. I remember being like terrified. Like I just felt like my face was just like, pushed down like a lot. Here is a very ugly, very awkward video that they took of me at the med spa. My lashes were popping off though. I, I miss my eyelash extensions some days, but anyways. This is a very awkward video that they took of me on my before and then my after. I like wasn't like looking at the camera, but it was a lot. I don't know. Again, you guys, it's my face. So I am much more dramatic and particular about it. Like I would love to know if other people are like, yeah, I don't see a difference at all. Or you're kind of like, I see a slight difference. I spend my life filming, editing my face, putting it on Instagram, putting it on YouTube. So I, yeah. I probably notice this more than others. But eyelid droopage is a very, very common side effect and it will go away and it did go away, thank God. Okay, so I'd like to learn more about droopy eyelid and kind of how, because apparently it's common. Well, this is what happened. When you treat the horizontal forehead lines, you got, I looked you up from two, mm -hmm. two years ago and you got the exact same amount. Yes. And you didn't get a whole lot, yeah. but we can't put much up here for that reason because this particular, the horizontal muscles, mm -hmm. this line, wants to do this. Yes, totally. So maybe if you feel a little heavy, we just do a little less next time. Okay. But you will not be as frozen, which may be okay, mm -hmm. but it may not last as long. Okay. So it's kind of a trade-off. So in a few wait, just another week, it'll feel better. It'll kind of loosen. Really. Up. So if I were you next time, mm -hmm. you've got 25 of Dysport, yes. which is about 8 of Botox, okay. equal. So next time, I think you should do 20, which is about 6 of Botox. Okay, so a little bit less. And I'll make it may not last as long, but that's okay. Now my forehead, mm -hmm. I do even less than that because I, being Asian, I already have kind of this heavier lid. Okay. So I have experimented with my forehead and I do extremely little. Really? But see, I want to move my eyebrows. But it's something where you just have to do it more often. I have to do it more often because my muscle's not asleep. Is no, no, no. there a fix for uh, we could, this? We could try putting a little drop in your brow and try to raise it. If I were you, next time I would do just a little left, less and then just get your treatment a little more often. A little more often well, and a little bit less. But if okay. you don't have a really large forehead, so yeah. you can get a little less. Okay. I am so glad that I vlogged these clips because I really, really, really do see a difference in my resting face. And that was why I wanted to get Botox in the first place. So I, I'm very happy to see that. You no, know, it's funny. I remember like going in and being like super nervous. Like, what do I do? And the nurse practitioner was so nice, so sweet. She was answering all of my questions and I had many, trust me. After doing some eyebrow raises and some brow furrows, she went right in, marked my face and boop, just did it. It didn't really hurt. Like, I remember, I remember thinking it was gonna hurt a lot more. There was like one side of my face that I think maybe hurt more than the others, but all in all, it was pretty painless. Felt like taking a shot or something. So that was my first experience getting Botox. I got 22 units in my forehead. I think she said she did some on my 11s for facial balance, but I just remember feeling like, ah, uh, my face is frozen. This is like kind of like weird. I don't really like this at all. So the second time that I got Botox was actually November of 2020. So nine months later, I talked to my friend Carly who lives in Denver and she was like, I've been getting some Botox just very lightly and I love what it does. Just go talk to the woman that I go to and ask her any questions and see if you like her any better. So glad that I did that. Thank you so much to nurse Joanne. Like love her. I learned that Botox is not the only player in the ring. There is something called Dysport, which I hope that I'm saying that right, because that will be embarrassing because that's how I'm saying it the whole video. My second and third time getting Botox, I didn't get Botox. I got something called Dysport, which I learned is the exact same thing. You know how Kleenex is a brand of tissues that has just become synonymous with like, oh, hand me a Kleenex, and people just like use the words interchangeably? That's the same thing with Dysport and Botox, where Botox is the more well-known brand, but Dysport does the exact same thing. 
It's like Uber and Lyft. <laughs> also, the difference between Botox and Dysport is like how they're measured, because there's no real difference, but it's basically three to one Botox to Dysport. So, the second time that I went in Denver, I told this incredibly nice woman, Joanne, how my last experience went, how I felt like my face was way too frozen on my forehead, it felt really strange, and then I told her how many units I put into my forehead. And I was like, oh yeah, they put like 22, and she was like, oh my god, whoa, that's like way too much. I don't think that your forehead, like you don't have enough space. Yeah. The very first time that I did Botox was in LA, uh -huh. and I feel like in LA they're like, more, they more, inject more, you more, more and more, charge you more, right? So the very first time I did it, it was actual Botox, and it was 22 units of Botox, and it was, I hated it. Oh, that's a huge amount. I know. And again, every single person, every single forehead is different, so the amount of units that might be a lot for me might not be a lot for someone else. And on my second treatment, I got 14 units put into my forehead instead of 22, and it was so much better, like so, so, so much better. The total that I paid on my second appointment was $94. That, that is something that I can afford, that is way more in my budget, especially if it's something that I wanted to like be really good and consistent about. $94, I can do that. I have not been consistent about it, to be honest, and I gotta say that even though the Botox officially wore off that very first time when I got a lot of units in, I remember thinking like, Six months later, my forehead lines still hadn't come back when I was resting. When I would raise my eyebrows, it was a little bit less intense. I just remember being like, it was better than it was before getting any Botox at all. So if you did want to try it once, you can try it once and you'll still see some positive effects from it. But I guess eventually th what they tell you is that it will come back as you, you know, continue to move that muscle and raise your eyebrows. Of course, every like dermatologist out there right now is like, Lauren, the amount of times that you're raising your eyebrows in this video is just contributing to the lines. I know, I know. And at a certain point, I don't care. I want to live my life and be expressive, but it's just like little, little slap and a band-aid on it of what I can do in the meantime, right? One of the things that my nurse uh, Joanne told me was, yeah, you just have to practice not scrunching your face. And I was like, I'm a really expressive person. I don't want to lose that. I like love talking on camera to people. It's very, very tough for me to not even talk with my hands. Like it's just, it's tough for me to not talk without expression. So I'm happy that I've honestly found Botox, uh, Dye Sport actually. And then my third treatment that I just recently got was on April 18th, 2022 of this year. I was just feeling more comfortable with the process and comfortable asking questions because once again, I had eyelid droopage that was making it really hard for me to do my makeup. And it, I, I just felt like it was really noticeable. It wasn't. It wasn't. I look back on this footage and it's not, but at the time you're like, something's different about my face. Like, I don't know what to do. I got my Dysport injection approximately 18 days ago, so it's more than two weeks. And right now it's this thing where like, this is me raising them. My 11s are still intact. But when I put eyeshadow on, like I've just never seen this amount of eyelid droop before. It's like if I were to spend time putting any eyeshadow on, it, it, there's just no point. I actually got a chance to go back and visit Joanne two weeks after my third, my most recent session. I asked her if I could bring my camera in, ask some questions, and even interview her, and I got to do that. What would you say? is a normal amount, like in Denver, what would you charge? And I know well, that it's different per doctor. Yeah, but most people for Botox, they're about 14 a unit. 14 and Dysport unit. is, there's three of Dysport to one of Botox. I wish it was one to one. Yeah. So the measurements aren't the same. I charge 12 for the Dysport, which is three times four. Does that make sense? Yes. So what would but you say is like I way too much? Like I know that there's like luxury spas. What would you say is like, do not pay for Botox that's more than this price. <laughs> oh. Because LA, I, it's hard to know. Because they're like, oh, well, this is what we charge here. And I'm like, it's the well, same chemical. It's, you want to charge per, for the unit. Some okay. people charge by the area. Well, what if you don't need that much? Yeah. So some places will do that. They'll that's just say, so much for your forehead, so much between your brows, so much for your crow's feet. I charge what you consume. So it'd be e more economical if you said, I want to find someone that charges by the unit. So the first time around when I filmed myself getting Botox in 2020, I was nervous and just kind of put the camera over there. You, you can't really see anything. You just see the back of the nurse, right? This time around, I was like, all right, screw it. Bring in the vlog camera and I'm going to vlog as I get injected. And I did that. And here is that right 
Now, needle warning, skip ahead if you don't wanna see it, but I'm going to show it to you. Only a little. Just quick. It's quick. Okay, that's it. Not bad at all. That's it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> kind of crazy, right? So crazy. I remember the first time when I did it, like the very, very first time, I, and I was filming, I walked to the camera and I like, I had these like big mosquito bite things on it. I feel like I didn't have that at all. Like with Dice Sport when I got that. And again, there I'm sure there's gonna be more knowledgeable people in the comments here about the differences between dye sport and Botox because I think that they kick in at different rates. I think I was most shocked to hear like, oh, it doesn't just happen right away, it happens gradually. I don't know. These are just all the things that came into my mind as a first timer Botox. Now that I've done it three times already, I don't know, I, I feel like a few of my friends that have done it, like honestly, the ones that I know that have gotten Botox are in Denver, not in LA, which is not what you think the stereotype would be. But they do get it more regularly and they're just like, wait, why aren't you doing it more regular? And I'm like, I don't know. I just wanna do what feels right for my body and my face and my budget. <laughs> I am probably going to try and search for a place here in LA where I can get it more regularly. I just, I gotta find a place where they charge by the unit, not by the area because it's LA and everything is just more expensive here. Fun stuff. If you know of anyone, by the way, shoot me some recommendations in the comments. Please do that. I am looking for a place. It's funny to like look back on the footage that I took of me getting it for the first time of just like, oh my God, like it's getting weaker. This is crazy. So I'm just happy that I'm able to go through this footage and finally show you guys now. Sharing with you guys my life as I go through it and the things that I learn. And honestly, I'm hoping that I can gain more knowledge from you, you all watching me as I talk about this as I read the comments that I, I hope that I get people that are like, I've done this too, or like, yeah, I just, I'm always interested to hear what you guys have to say. And overall, I'm really happy with my decision to get my occasional Botox injection. I will probably do it again very soon, and I'll probably start talking about it on my Instagram and, and documenting it there, so make sure you're following me there. So that's the story of how I started getting Botox, and I might continue to do it just so that I can it's just the at resting that really bothers me, I think. But I'm getting more and more used to it of like, it's life, we age, I want to age gracefully and all of that. I promise you that I do. I don't really see myself getting too deep into like filler and injections and all of that stuff. It, it kind of scares me to be totally honest with you. I've seen people claim that filler can be dissolved, but like then other doctors are like, by the way, no, it never really fully dissolves and that sometimes it can shift. Would love a, a professional's actual opinion in the comments down below on like filler and stuff. And cause right now everyone's talking about filler and like, they're like, oh, I'm gonna do my under eyes. I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna do my cheeks. And I'm like, I'm afraid. That sounds very scary and weird. And I think that's why like, I don't know, I was so nervous to make this video. Cause I'm like, what are people gonna think of me? Are they gonna think I'm super fake? And it's just like, thankfully we're in an era of you do you boo boo. <laughs> like everyone's like your body, you do what you want. Like I'm not telling you to go do this. I'm just telling you how it went for me. <laughs> All right, y'all, I am rambling, but I will say that, that I'm really enjoying planning out the future content that I'm bringing to you and to this main channel. Don't worry, you will be seeing more pop culture and Taylor Swift content from me as well as some lifestyle, things going on in my life, changes happening in my life, big exciting things, funny random story times that I have for you because I've got a few of those being edited right now, including all of my Mexico content that I'm very behind on, but you'll see it eventually, but I love you. Thank you so much for watching. I miss you guys. I wanna know, I like I always say, I always wanna know the types of videos that you wanna see from me. Shoot out some random video ideas if you want. Maybe I'll do them and maybe I'll give you a big old shout out. <laughs> Make sure you go check out the full vlog on my vlog channel, my full day, my mom's reaction to me getting Botox because she actually came with me and was like, what's happening? I've never done this before. Like she didn't get it done, but she was like, I'm curious, I'm gonna watch. If you guys have any more questions about Botox, ask them in the comments, shoot me a DM. Maybe I can make this like a little dialogue on my Instagram stories like you guys know that I love to do. And yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, this story time, catching up with me. I miss talking to you guys. And so I'm working on being more consistent on my YouTube channel. So stay tuned for some fun story time, lifestyle, and pop culture Taylor Swift videos coming your way. Huh. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> 
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video at all, please make sure you leave us a like, leave me a comment, let me know how you're doing, and obviously make sure you're subscribed to this channel with your post notifications turned on, as well as my vlog channel and my TikTok. Go, go hang out with me there. I'm trying to do the stuff. I'm trying to do all the things. All right, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.